Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is the founder and CEO at Two Chairs, Alex Katz. Alex, how are you today? Doing well, Jared. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. I'm, I'm pumped to have you here. Uh, I think we should dive right into it. We, we keep these short and sweet. Uh, tell the audience a little bit about your background. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my background is kind of a mix of, of healthcare and technology. Um, started my career serving large health systems as a management consultant, and then spent some time in the technology world working on, on big data software. But what brought me to mental health was really a personal connection. It came from seeing uh, my partner, close friends, and family members struggle in different ways and ultimately really struggle to get help. And as I dug in and learned more about the industry, I realized uh, this is not an anecdotal problem affecting a handful of people. This is a widespread systemic issue, and and that got me digging in more. So, I mean, that's that really gives us a good why uh, for for you know why why you started two chairs. Can you give us a in? Let's also focus in on the the how and the what of mm-hmm. the company, if you don't mind. It, it you know when you kind of give us a, a quick overview. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I started the company back in 2017, and and this was a moment in the mental health industry where we kind of had the status quo, antiquated industry, and we had some of those early digital CBT apps. And as I dug in, I think what I found is really the absolute best tool we have in mental health care is therapy. And when you look at the research literature, what you find is what makes therapy work is the relationship between a therapist and a client. That is the foundation of of what makes psychotherapy tick. That's the foundation of change. And when I talked to friends and family, what I found was some people loved their therapist and some people really didn't like their therapist. It wasn't the right fit. They didn't have the right background, the right style in the room, et cetera. And so my work kept coming again and again back to that relationship as the key in mental health care. And so when I started to think about, well, what should two chairs be all about? Um, we really started the company focused on how do we build the absolute best therapeutic relationships in mental health care. And what I realized is that really the only way to do that is to rebuild the system from the ground up. And so that's why we said, we're going to open a clinic, we're going to employ therapists, and we're going to use data and technology to really invent a matching system for getting clients to exactly the right therapist for them. So in hindsight, it was kind of a crazy thing to do for a non, a non clinician to say, let's go start a clinic. Um, but, uh, but certainly glad that's the approach we took. And the, the interesting thing with your space, right? I always like asking questions where uh, founders get to paint a picture, right? Mm-hmm. They get, or tell a story about where we think an industry is heading. So in, in the case of mental health, right, I, I'd like for you to paint a picture or, or tell us in your mind, what is what does a world look like where everyone has access to exceptional mental health? Yeah, um, well, appreciate you, you formulating the question that way, that that is our mission statement um, to, to build a world where, where we all have access to exceptional mental health care. And, you know, I think over the last five years, we as a mental health industry have made tremendous progress. You know, a lot of money has flowed into the space. A lot of important companies have been built. And I think we've made tremendous progress in creating a lot more access to care. It's, it's easier than it's ever been to work with a therapist. I think where we still have a lot of work to do, though, as a mental health care system is making sure people are working with the right therapist for them and making sure that care is actually effective. Um, and so for us, that means we've got to be very intentional and very data-driven in how we match clients to the right care and the right therapist for them. And it means we've got to measure care. Um, You know, today it's only about 10% of therapists that are measuring the care they're delivering, even though we know from the research, measurement-based care makes care dramatically more effective. So those are certainly two foundational elements we need in an exceptional mental health care system. Um, And we need more options for clients. Um, you know, we see group therapy, for example, as a very underutilized tool that we have in the tool belt of mental health. Um, the evidence for groups is very, very strong, um, and it's a scalable service line. You know, it takes that therapeutic hour and it enables you to serve more people. So, you know, I think where the mental health system needs to go uh, is taking more advantage of things like group therapy 
um, in addition to individual therapy and medication, and then being very, very thoughtful about how we route people and match people to the right care for them. And I, I see a lot of, you know, there's this, there's a lot of mental health companies, right? And um, I, I like your approach that you've taken with it and your mission and, you know, that why. One of the areas I've been hearing more about, and I know this is on your website too, is you know, creating strong therapeutic alliances. Can you tell us why that's so important, especially like in mental health? Yeah. Yeah. Look, in, in psychotherapy, the alliance is everything. Um, you know, today we've got, we've now got decades of research um, that have consistently shown that of all the factors that influence care, um, the alliance is by far the best predictor of outcomes. Uh, it's more predictive than the years of experience of the therapist, the therapeutic intervention being used in the room, a whole host of different factors. Um, it all comes back to the alliance. And, and it makes sense. You think about from first principles, what is psychotherapy? It is a healing relationship. And therefore, it's all about getting someone to the right therapist for them. And over time, there's been more research that's been done on what actually enables a great therapeutic alliance. And it's things like the background identity and lived experience of the therapist. It's the style of the therapist in the room, the way that they work together, the way that they set goals. Um, and then data and measurement plays a big role. Um, by actually approaching care in a feedback informed way, you can make sure that you are building that alliance. Um, and if you're not, um, you can fix it. You can get someone to the right therapist for them or repair a, a rupture in the relationship. Um, so in terms of, from the client standpoint, it's everything. It's what enables change and, 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 and impact. And then you flip it and you think about it from the therapist standpoint. And to take a step back, you know, you think about therapists in the mental health system, their services have never been in higher demand, uh, yet the role of a therapist um, leaves something to be desired. You know, we're seeing the rates of burnout in this profession are scary high. And we hear stories from therapists every day that um, they're not satisfied in their work. Um, there's kind of the next person up mentality. We've got a client, you have a spot in your schedule, take them. Um, that leads to burnout. If you're not working with clients that you love working with, that are well suited to your expertise and your skill set, um, it makes the work a lot less fulfilling. And so something we, are, we hear from our therapists at Two Chairs is, one thing they absolutely love about working here is they have a panel of clients that's very, very well suited to both their preferences and their clinical expertise. What What's some of the things, Alex, that, what are some of the things that you're really excited about uh, as we head into 2023 and beyond for, for you know, for yourself and uh, two chairs? Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot to to be excited about right now for for us. Um, you know, there's there's obviously just a tremendous amount of need when it comes to mental health care services in this country today, coming out of COVID. And so, a big focus area for us in 2023 is how do we continue to grow our system as as quickly as we can while keeping a very strong eye on quality for our clients and on clinician experience for our therapists. I think our MO has really been all about thoughtful growth, and that theme will continue for us this year. Uh, in 2022, we went to the state of Washington uh, from our home state of California, and in 2023, we'll be expanding to a third state, uh, soon to be announced, can't share it just yet, uh, but that's going to be a, a big step for us as well. Um, and then the final thing I'll emphasize, you know, I talked a little bit earlier about group therapy and the role that we think groups should play. Um, in, in our mental health system. And that's a big focus area for us as well. Uh, we launched some of our, our first groups last year, and this year will be an opportunity for us to really scale that program up and bring group therapy to a lot more folks. And what we heard last year is group therapy can be a powerful healing experience. There's something you know quite cathartic about being in a virtual room with 10 other humans um, that have gone through life experiences that are somewhat similar and al or analogous to the ones that you've had. Um, it, it makes the, the work of group therapy um, less isolating to do it with that group dynamic, with a, a supporting set of peers. Um, so, so we're really excited about the opportunity with groups as well. It'll be really interesting to continue to hear more about that. Uh, it makes sense though, right? You tend to like people that share common interests with you 
it's it's only natural if you know you've gone through something traumatic or you're you're, you're dealing with some some rough stuff that mm-hmm. other people you're, you're gonna it's gonna you're gonna resonate with those people more you're gonna want to feel more open to share when you're around your your peers people that understand what you're going through so that makes total sense um yeah. well Alex, I want to thank you, by the way, for, for coming on the podcast. I would love to have you come back on, get you on one of these panels that we do, uh, cover some some big topics in the space. But uh, this was a great uh, introduction to uh, you know to you to our audience, um, and we're really excited for what Two Chairs is continuing to do, and look forward to staying in touch with you. That sounds great. Thanks so much, Jared. 